Hello everyone, my name is The Fox. This is Uncharted Legacy of Thieves Collection. I am super stoked for this. The Uncharted series is my favorite Naughty Dog series. Uh, Uncharted 2 is my absolute favorite. I didn't like Part 3. I bought Part 4, but I haven't played it. I first started playing Uncharted 4 on this device, and I put a lot of playtime on there. I put about 17 to 18 hours on it with my specific presets, which we're going to talk about later. I'm going to talk about a few things here. Let's say what this video is about in general. So the type of content that I do, I take a look at different handhelds and how to run different things on them with an idea of trying to maximize performance while also caring about battery life. This is the GPU Max 2. This is running AMD's Rembrandt 6800U platform. The 6800U part is the thing that most people are going to care about because there's a lot of handouts coming out that are going to be competing with Steam Deck directly. We're going to be talking about benchmarks later on, but before that, we're going to do some pre-flight checks on things that you should do to just optimize your experience. One of those being on the Windows side, especially if you're going to be doing WinDeck or Windows 11 22H2 on the Steam Deck, as well as Windows on other types of handouts, but also some pre-flight check stuff on SteamOS as well. From there, we're going to be transitioning and looking at my preferred settings. Now, this is the settings that I played for 18 hours on this game. It is a 40 FPS lock, more or less. There are going to be times where 95% of the time we're going to fluctuate, but we're going to get right back to 40, and I'll kind of demonstrate that in video for you. We're also going to take a look at doing ultra quality and locking it to 30, but keeping the screen locked at 60 hertz. That is to say, the screen is going to stay at 60 hertz, but we're going to lock the frame rate at 30 FPS. And then that's going to lead into uh, total input latency that we're going to talk about later. And that may surprise you versus the 60 hertz locked at 30 versus 40 hertz locked at 40 FPS. So we're going to touch base on that and also take a look at total input latency as well and see how that all compares at different frame rates and different refresh rates. After that, we're going to just briefly talk about FSR2. There are some issues that I would just like to highlight. They happen few and far between, but they are super noticeable when they do happen. And then last, we're going to end on benchmarks. Uh, ultimately, this port is fantastic. I absolutely had a blast with it. Zero problems running on SteamOS with Steam Deck. And we're going to talk about the performance differences between SteamOS and Windows on the Steam Deck as well. We'll take a look at everything. So that's it. Let's go ahead and get into it. Up first is our pre-flight check. So number one is after you install the game, all 120 some odd gigabytes of it or something, uh, it's going to take about 10 minutes to compile shaders in the beginning. You 100% want that to finish. So just let it sit on the menu screen and just let it finish doing that before you start playing. If you're on the Windows side, this is only applies to Windows 11 22 H2 as they just put in the flip model presentation mode that is available that you can just kind of check. This only applies to older DirectX, uh, DirectX games. DirectX 12 technically already has this option built into it. And you can kind of understand that because when we take a look at the settings in Uncharted, they do not offer an exclusive full screen mode. You have windowed or borderless window. In the Windows side of things, that means that the desktop's Windows Manager, the compositor for Windows, is always going to be active. You will not have exclusive full screen access, which is kind of important on a device like the Steam Deck if you're going to do Windows on the Steam Deck because you're not going to be able to bring up a virtual keyboard if you have exclusive full screen mode activated. You will need a compositor like Desktop Windows Manager to bring up a, uh, a keyboard or anything else to be able to see. So uh, it's good in that regard for devices that are candy bar designed, but if you have like a full featured uh, PC handled like the GPU Max 2 where you have the full complement of keyboard and mice available to you on the handled, it matters less um, with having exclusive full screen there. So it's a little unfortunate that we don't have it there, but we do have total input latency checks as well later on in this video. With pre-flight checks out of here, let's start talking about my preferred settings. So we're going to change our refresh rate to 40 hertz. Once you're at 40 hertz, you're going to lock it at 40 FPS. You're not going to leave it just going to whatever. You're going to lock it to 40 FPS. Then in the settings, you're going to go and change the FSR mode to balanced. You're going to push it up a little bit. You're going to need just that little bit more of upscaling before you can get a more consistent 40 FPS lock on there. Additionally, if we go into the advanced settings, the only thing that we're going to want to keep at low is shadows, reflections, and ambient occlusion. Everything else you can actually push to ultra. And with these settings on the Steam Deck, it just looks fantastic on there. Now, the benefit of doing these particular settings here is that you are going to be maximizing fluidity, consistency of frame rate, while also maximizing battery life. There are going to be a lot of times where you don't really need to push the system that hard and you might actually hit 50, 55 FPS. But because we're kind of bringing that frame rate down to 40, we're actually going to be able to convert all of that savings into extended battery life. 
more or less you're going to be looking at two and a half hours to three hours of battery life with these particular settings however if you wanted to you could push for ultra quality with zero fsr and just resolve at the native resolution and with these settings leave the screen at 60 hertz but in the settings of the game itself lock it to 30 fps the input latency isn't actually as bad as the 40 hertz mode 40 hertz mode is largely playable and i played like that for 18 hours but i did notice especially when aiming that i would kind of like be jerking around a bit when you do 60 hertz but lock it to 30 fps it actually feels kind of okay and maybe that's just because i've been i'm used to being playing on playstation but it felt right but the good news is that at a lock 30 fps you can actually push for ultra quality across everything and even like when you're seeing gameplay of it it's silky smooth even in like gunfights and explosions and stuff really cool to see so those are basically my two settings you can push you can lower settings all the way down and try to push for high frame rate you're never going to successfully hit 60 fps at all times that's just not going to happen however you could lock it to 50 uh 50 hertz and 50 fps that is a nice exchange in terms of uh getting better input latency and having a consistent experience however it should be noted that both on the either with the ultra quality settings or pushing for high frame rate both of these are going to be consistently pushing the machine to its max because you'll never actually satisfy a 60 fps target which means we're going to be pushing the tdp to its max which means that we're going to be getting the absolute worst battery life possible on the steam deck which is around 90 minutes so you can either do my 40 uh, hertz 40 fps preset which will give you two and a half to three hours and a general well-rounded uh, play experience and very consistent or you can go for maximum frame rate or ultra quality and still have a really good gameplay experience in there, but have just truly terrible battery life in 90 minutes. Now, since we're talking about these different quality settings, the other thing that I want to bring up is total input latency. Now, this is a thing that is matters a lot. And I, I noticed it when I was moving with the camera around where it felt a bit sluggish uh, to move around. And that's where it was really highlighting when you're kind of just traversing and everything. You didn't really feel it, but when you're kind of moving around it really got pretty gnarly so what i did was i took my camera unfortunately my current camera right now i can only record at 1080p 120 but i have verified that it does record at 120 fps so i take 120 fps and i figure out how long that takes in a thousand milliseconds 120 frames per second is 8.33 milliseconds per frame so since i know that information i can actually calculate how long it is from my press of a button to when there is an update on the screen and we can see that how that looks on a bunch of different stuff what's nice is on the steam deck i can actually make the touchpad the actual indicator and i can time when i touch the pad as opposed to when i depress a button a lot better because the touchpad is a flat surface so when we're taking a look at this particular video of the 40 hertz 40 fps when i press the touchpad it's either if i take away if i minus a frame or a plus a frame we're looking at a total of 17 to 18 120 fps frames what that means is that our input latency especially from a 40 hertz window is looking between 125 to 150 milliseconds before the button press to update on screen to happen that is not very good uh it's playable and a lot of console games actually have that type of total input latency but it's not fantastic if we take a look at 50 hertz and 50 fps you can see as we're counting up those frames right at the 13 frame mark you can actually see the ping pong ball kind of show up and if we take a look at that in 13, 14 frames, which basically translates to 100 to 120 milliseconds of total input latency, which is still not super great, but it's on the better side of console stuff. And then if we just don't do anything, if we just have the uh, screen at 60 hertz and just let the frame rate go as high as it possibly can with as low settings as we possibly could, you can see right at the frame count of 10 that the ping pong ball shows up. You can actually see the trail going through on this 60 hertz panel so the thing here is that now with the unfiltered 60 hertz just trying to hit 60 but we're not trying we're not actually able to hit it consistently in this particular instance we're at 80 to 90 milliseconds of total input latency that is button press to an update on the screen of seeing that action that is better from a user experience point of view however the frame rate isn't consistent which isn't good for game playability reasons also, you're going to be pushing the machine as hard as you possibly can in that instance and get the absolute worst battery life. But let's take a look at running the screen at 60 hertz 
ultra settings and doing 30 FPS lock. So you can see the ping pong ball just kind of appear at frame count 13. And what this basically translates to is that, again, the only thing that we care about is total input latency, right? I'm counting from when I press to when there's an update on the screen. This is kind of separate from what's going on here. We're basically looking at 110 to 120 milliseconds of total input latency. Now, that isn't still that good, but it's better than the 40 hertz, 40 FPS total input latency. So this is something that you're going to kind of want to have to play with. I would still advise you to do the 40 FPS method only because that's consistent, the best battery life and a good play experience. Whereas the ultra quality, no FSR, 30 FPS lock is still very good, but is also going to give you around 90 minutes of battery life. So if we take a look at this holistically, right, these are the two modes that I would say that you should target either ultra quality, 60 Hertz, FP, uh, 60 Hertz refresh, 30 FPS lock, or uh, my particular presets with 40 Hertz, 40 FPS lock. For what it's worth, I played 18 hours with my 40 Hertz setting. I did notice it from time to time where it was not ideal, but not a showstopper. All right, next I want to just talk about FSR2 and there are some instances where there is some fringe trailing that kind of happens uh, with the FSR2 implementation on Uncharted, at least initially upon launch. Maybe this gets fixed later on, but at least now there are absolutely times, regardless of which FSR mode you choose, it gets worse as you kind of push it to performance or ultra performance, but it is still apparent regardless of whatever FSR you're using. There's going to be this fringe trail that kind of fades in and out as whenever the character is like slowly bobbing back and forth or if you have a distant character walking very slowly you're going to see this weird trail kind of following behind them that's just kind of a thing to just be mindful of if that annoys you then i would say do ultra quality 60 hertz refresh rate 30 fps lock in game and that'll be your best bet and then last, we're going to talk about benchmarks. All right, now to talk about benchmarks really quickly. What I am comparing against here is the Steam Deck versus AMD's Rembrandt, so 6800U. I am using the GPU Newman Max 2 as the platform to test against. Now, I did run it at two different wattages on the GPU Newman Max 2. Now, this is still going to apply to any 6800U, so I'm basically comparing the 6800U to the Steam Deck's custom Van Gogh SOC. We can see on the orange line that we're taking a look at the 15 watt test on the 6800U versus the blue line, which is the Steam Deck at its max TDP, which is 15 watt as well. And then I also tested at 20 watt, which is really the sweet spot for 6800U going a little bit over that will get you better performance, but the amount of power that you're gonna be putting in, there's gonna be a uh, substantial diminishing returns there. And I just wanna show you this frame graph here, just so that you can see that my benchmark kind of lined up. You can see the peaks and valleys here. Uh, more or less line up. If we go to the bar chart of this, this is what it looks like. Along the top, you can see all the settings. So this is Uncharted Legacy of Thieves. It is 800p, but because we're using balanced FSR2, it is upscaling. So it's upscaling from 423p. Shadows, Reflections, and Ambient Occlusion is at low, which is the lowest setting. And then everything else is set to ultra. So if you wanted to mimic those settings, that's what I'm using. And if we take a look here, this is really the two that we're going to be comparing because this is going to be apples to apples, right? So 6800U, 15 watt versus van gogh at 15 watt and we see that we have a negligible increase when it's windows to windows uh van gogh versus the 6800u uh at five percentile we're getting a five percent boost and at one percentile we're looking at a ten percent boost so that one percentile is really where all of our gains are coming from but if we were to boost it up to 20 watt we can see that we're getting a 23 percent uplift versus Van Gogh at 15 watt. So we're spending around 25% more power for a 22, 23% gain. That's relatively worth it. If we take a look at our five percentile, we're looking at a 26% gain and one percentile, we're looking at a 32% gain. Uh, so this is really just to kind of give you an idea of where the 6800U stands. 6800U is still better than the Steam Deck, but at the same wattage, it really doesn't shine up until we start pushing more power into it. Overall, this is just a comment on the performance differences between the Steam Deck and the newer handles that will be coming out using AMD's 6800U platform. And for the most part, Steam Deck is competing just fine. So that's my video on Uncharted Legacy of Thieves Collection. I'm so happy that this game is finally here. I'm stoked that there's a bunch of PlayStation games coming to PC. That's pretty much it. My 40 hertz, 40 FPS mode is what I played through. It's the best for consistency and battery life. 
However, if the FSR2 bug kind of bother you and the total input latency side of the 40 hertz, 40 FPS side bugs you, I would say do 60 hertz uh, refresh, 30 FPS lock in game, ultra quality, everything else, and you're going to have a good time. This is a super fun game. I'm really enjoying Uncharted 4. I should have played it a long time ago. As always, guys, thank you for your time and thanks for watching.